Hello, good evening, and welcome to this evening's conversation on BIC Streams in collaboration with Vikalp Bengaluru. My Har Rag, the place of the music of a place. Joining us today is the filmmaker Aruna Bhattacharji, who will be in conversation with the producer of the film, Sunil Shanbag, and filmmaker Swati Dandekar. Uh, we will be posting the bios of uh, all the panelists today in the chat box that you see at the bottom of your screen. Next to the chat box is the Q&A box. Please post your questions in there. Uh, the film will also be available uh, to on view uh, for the next two days. So if you're here and haven't watched the film as yet, do uh, try and catch it. With that, over to you, Sunil and Swati. Thank you, Raghu. Uh, a warm welcome to all um, on behalf of Vikalp Bengaluru. Uh, we begin this new year with yet another classic. Uh, this time it's a film about music or rather the social and cultural context of uh, music making uh, and the building of a musical tradition. Maiha Rag, which was made in 1993, won the National Award for the Best Nonfiction Film, as also the award of Best Audiographer for Indrajit Nyogi. Its award citation said, and I quote, for presenting a candid and spontaneous portrayal of the decay of our heritage as it is being engulfed by clouds of heartless commercialism. I'm very happy to welcome the makers of the film here today. Arunab Bhattacharji, or Tipu, as many of us know him, uh, lives in Mumbai and uh, began his filmmaking career with fiction films and later moved on to documentary films and television programs uh, in partnership with Sunil Shanbagh. As part of this collaboration, his other works include a film called Blessed by the Plague, which is about the transformation of the city of Surat, uh, Dhandyat Ram Nahi, about the Koli community in Mumbai and how they've been pushed to the edge. Choti Choti Bate, a television show on parenting and several other non-fiction works. In his own words, over the years, he has been making with increasing infrequency. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sunil Shanbag, also based in Mumbai, is a theater director with many, many acclaimed plays to his credit. And as a documentary filmmaker and producer, his work includes a film on the Palanpuri Jain community, films and oral history archives about scientists and science institutions in India, and a long-term visual documentation project with a contemporary dancer, the late Astad Debu, whom we lost very recently. Thank you both for joining us here. And uh, now it's time to sort of rewind, you know, to transport ourselves back, I don't know, 28, 29 years ago. Uh, and since I don't have a, a magic a very wand, a <laughs> magic wand to do so, we have to kind of open the memory boxes in our minds. Yes, there's, a very sorry, there's a very significant date that everybody remembers at that point, and that is December 6, 1992. So yes. use that as a marker, you know? Yes, yes, yes. So is that, in fact, what you want to start with to tell your story? I was going to ask you, in fact, uh, that, you know, most films uh, in, in India uh, about music tend to be um, biographies about musicians. And uh, in your film, you have chosen to look at a place uh, and, and its role in music making. So how did this come about? How did you decide to make a film on Maihar? Well, most films, most films on music in India are hagiographies. Yeah. They're barely biographies, you know, and is generally just, you know, sustained myth making. And, you know, and maybe there was a time around that period where a fair number of uh, nonfiction films were being made on music and musical things. And I mean, they may have been very nice to look at. I'm sure, and they were, some, several of them were. There was a trend, you know, to, to make films about uh, music, but in a kind of, kind of very, 
kind of uh, how to say you know imposing a filmic grammar so intensely upon it that like the music became just a kind of a you know a kind of an artifice you know i mean if this is making sense but there was a period of that time and they all made by very nice filmmakers but i should say before we say anything that you have to know that this film idea started as a big project okay now after i should tell the audience that i haven't seen the film in more than 25 years and i'm surprised that all the thoughts and ideas that we had about such things albeit maybe the print is like this and the subtitle but i'm i'm pretty surprised and relieved in a way that it was a portent of things to come you know i and i can see that now and i feel like a fool for having neglected it for so long so that's at the outset thank you bic and swati and sunil and everybody for doing it so that it just wakes me up from my rip van winkle mode okay now the point is that it started big sunil and i were working we had thought around that time there were so many kinds of pressures of course we know cerebrally what's going on okay what was happening at that time but so we were looking at this kind of sunil correct me if i'm wrong yes, but it yes, started on, yes, big and yeah. like you know we were thinking all right let's look at the life of baba ustad alauddin khan sahab which we all know we grew up if you knew a little music you knew you know he was on postage stamps you know he was guru of uh, ravi shankar and ali akbar you knew all these things i mean that was like part of growing up so how to take the tr- the journey of a peasant who just basically wants out and walk through music in some small remote village in tripura in like in you know in long pre independence india and then like moves across the continent you know from this place and and you know goes to was it rampur gharana and you know the and these things are documented but you have to hunt for them they were there you know and so and then eventually it comes to this place and then we had this you know and it was a big notion that you know about the transformation from you know princely patronage these were all the big ideas that musicologists were engaged with you know all the at that time okay and obviously we were also like you know in that and in fact we came to such a position that we kind of became like semi authorities for a lot of the people so you can say this i shouldn't say this okay yeah. we were in touch with all the big musicologists and you know we we knew our stuff basically you know because sunil and i are junkies for knowing our stuff so we knew all the stuff and it it the it, the the document that we put together okay i don't know where that is but if you see that okay it was the single most comprehensive document of a film that dealt with big grand things it would go to san francisco it would go to etc etc okay what happened was we actually got in touch with them with ali akbar khan saab with his the, the whole thing but there's so many gatekeepers here, okay we got in touch with them his secretary everything finally almost accepting started hustling for money on that basis and i meet ali akbar alone in my heart okay the most precious moment of my life he said like let's try and do it and i go there alone and i sit there with him for 5 hours while he plays harmonium drinking whiskey and smoking his dunhills you know in that cold maihar thing and i'm like he was okay he was great he was with it then it didn't happen i don't want to get into why it didn't happen but it didn't happen and we were thinking like you know hey let's you know should we revisit and should we relook but at that time um we took a decision that you know we've already spent you know then the next time around sunil and i went to reki okay and at that time the date is significant because yes. we get off at the station at satna and the first thing you hear is gumbad dhast ho gaye 
Do you remember, Sunni? Yes, That's the yes, first yes, thing. Yes, okay, in this yes. dark scene where we're meeting Ashok Mishra, who worked with us. Ashok is our friend, and he was also research because he's originally from Satna, and his brother, etc., stays there. So we used their good offices, and it was already edgy. The next morning, leaving for Maher. Maher is quite close to Satna. Maher is a small little town, you know, just known for limestone. Uh, en route to Khajuraho, okay, tomato growing country, okay, and Ustad Alauddin Khan. And that's the Sharda, it. And the Sharda, and the Sharda temple. The temple. Yeah. Okay, that's it, right? Now, we go, Sunil and I land up there, okay, we go there to the only hotel that exists in this town, okay, and the country's gone mad, okay. It's gone mad. I mean, like everywhere, all the puts just madness. And we don't know what to do. We're hanging around there, like exiled, okay? And the most intriguing thing for all our cerebral kind of approach towards whether, you know, community and music and the sociology of it all and all that stuff. And we have all these big ideas, you know, like it's like making a film in Vienna about, you know, Beethoven or whatever it is. And we were forced to spend eight, nine days there in that town, okay, when the country's gone mad, okay, when Satna, which is the closest town, is burning. And nothing happened there. Absolutely nothing happened. We were cruising, hanging around, met local people, went meeting this guy, asking stories, and we got stuck. Stunning stories that are unprintable, right? But the core people know about all that, okay? And we were in a situation where you say, now what? So we come back and we re rework the idea based on the fact that now what has happened, we've actually seen the physical place. This is what the physical place is. This is what the this is what the, uh, the 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 legacy is. There's a school. There's this you know disciple. So it had these you know there's a there's a princely state which is in crumbling. So it had this kind of very uh, simply put. We were really really so thrilled with the locals there, man. There was absolutely no communal problem in my heart during that period. Okay, yeah. not that there isn't any at the at the base level, but nothing overt, nothing. So it was like almost like like Asterix comics, you know, in the village you know so well, you know, that there's a magic portion. So, so the point is that we come back and we figure that we should be making a film on the relationship of this place when the guru goes, yes. because that's what we experienced. Okay, yes. so it's not. It didn't start like that. Like that. Okay, that was the point I wanted to make. Yeah, here. yeah. No, that's very. Sunil, am I yeah. right about this? Yeah, no. yeah. You know, yeah. I think I think what happens, Swati. I mean, just yeah. to put it very briefly, yeah. is that you, we discovered the real story. You know, mm. <laughs> that was really the important thing. Mm. You mm. know, we discovered mm. the real story. That's it. As simple yeah. as that. Yeah. yeah. But you know, I mean, since uh, uh, you and Ashok have, uh, you know, uh, your names come under the research thing, you, sure. I'm sure many of you did many things together. But you, so you started off wanting to make a film, as Tipu just said, on Ustad Alauddin Pasa. Mm. And then uh, what, I mean, yes, you, one is that you encountered this place, which was not, where there was nothing happening while the rest of the country was burning. Mm. Uh, uh, but what else did you encounter that that surprised you and that uh, and that sort of changed that, that made you change uh, what the film should be about? Yes, the place. Yes, I mean Tipu's given the larger book, but yeah. can you tell us some stories? Well, Who did you, know, you meet? Yeah, see, actually, our entry point was you know when we were all in some way or the other uh, connected with this television series Surabhi, right? And we used to send teams out to shoot. And actually, you know, it's interesting that uh, Survi was actually one of the things that tried to have that kind of approach to culture, kind of a more sociological approach to culture, right? And um, in that, uh, we decided to do a short film on the Mahir Band, which was quite mm -hmm. a unique little institution. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ashok, who was also part of the Survi team as a writer, 
uh, had first hand knowledge of Mayer and Mayer band because he comes he came from Satya. Came from there, yeah. Yeah. And we heard a lot of stories about the Mayer band and about Mayer. And again, you know, this is how it is that so much of this information is anecdotal, is mythology. So, you know, the one thing about the Mayer band which fascinated us was how Alauddin Khasab went into the armory, pulled out old gun barrels, cut them to different sizes and yes. create musical instruments. And that we thought was an incredibly powerful metaphor, you know, where you take yeah. weapons of war and turn them into weapons of, I mean, instruments of music. music. Uh, but then there was also mythology that the Mayer festival that takes place there every year, which was, you know, in memory of Baba, Baba Alauddin Khasab. Uh, even the chana wala who sells you chana knows all the rags of Hindustani music, you know, so that mythology was <laughs> also there, right? Uh, you can imagine it was very, very yeah. attractive. Yeah. Now, when you go there, uh, many things happen, you know, you really, you catch a town when it's, it's not really interested in sh covering itself up because of the crisis that's happening all around, okay? Mm. That's very interesting because everybody is distracted by what is happening around they know they are safe, but there is that worry. Jabalpur is burning on one side, Satna is burning on the other side, trains have been stopped, etc., etc. Remember, this is also before, uh, you know, subscriber trunk, trunk dialing, man, or something like that. It was very oh hard my. to talk to people. Yes. Oh yes. You know, yes. and our families were in Bombay and we were worried, all that. Okay. Yes. But then you start discovering the, the, in a sense, the underbelly. And I don't want to put it yeah. too harshly, but, you know, it is, in a sense, what it really is. Okay, yeah. mm. uh, the school itself, the decrepit condition in the school, mm. Mm. Um, generally the sense of, you know, a sense of being let down that yes. pervades the people yes. of my her, you know, yes. that all the grades have gone away, you know, and then we are left. And so what are you left with? If you remember, Tipu, we, we were very, we were centering a film around the tomb that yeah. uh, Ali Akbar Khan Sahib was uh, building yeah. in memory building of his father, right? Our yeah. entire film yeah. was to be, because he was supposed to come and inaugurate it and all that kind yeah. of stuff. So it was yeah. a very powerful... Yeah. And he was okay with it. it was a yeah, very he was okay with thing. it, right? I mean, you know, son coming back to his yeah. hometown. To, for his, yes. it, it had all, all these that kind of there, associates. All those and you discover that that's not really the story, you know? Yeah. And then one day... That's just tokenism. Come, it's just tokenism in that context. Do you know, all. I just read, did you know, Tipu, that now I don't think the house belongs to them anymore. And so, there is an art, there's a residency there and a sculpture yes, park and all kinds I, of things. I read that anyway, it has been, anyway, yeah. that's a, yeah. <laughs> but yes. let's not go there. Hey, I'm, hey, going, I'm yes. going back let's to my go cave. <laughs> yes. I'm, going, that, I'm going back well, to my the, cave. The takeover is complete. Let, let oh, me just say that. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, and then one oh. day we get introduced to David, the ah. lost disciple. Everybody yes. in my ear knows David. But as David. far as the rest of the world is concerned, nobody had a clue. No, yes. Oh my God. Swati, the meeting David, meeting the members of the royal family, you know, yes. the, the, not the generation that nurtured uh, Aladdin Khan Sahib, but the next but generation. The next, right? yeah. Uh, and how, <laughs> how, how the difference that can take place in one generation, you know, in terms. Yeah. So yeah. all that, uh, also at a personal level, it was just freaky for me because, you know, mm. I was going through some kind of a similar guru shishya type kind of situation yeah 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 he had a direct though in mm. a very very urban mm. contemporary mm. kind of way mm. and looking but the at the core things are similar yeah and i said oh my mm. god this is exactly what i'm going through in a not yeah. mm. elected mm. orientation but you know so i think i think that really uh opened resonated and yeah yeah completely, yeah completely yeah completely yeah actually yeah. Yeah. actually on seeing it you know we had we, ha we have a lot of theoretical constructs that fit in with anecdotal evidence and you have these musical histories and you know one can start depending on how prolific you want to project yourself as there are enough of that okay mm. but if you don't then this was the this was the essence of it yeah. all. that's mm. It. Mm. the mm. essence of it mm. all was mm. there you know and mm. beyond that there was another thought when meeting people in that environment, when we are talking as young, we are talking as documentary filmmakers wanting to find out what's the story, how's this, and you know, the kind of stories that come up, which you know that you can't film. It's not possible to do that without a hornet's nest would be like a pleasurable thing, yeah, if you, you know, so you don't do that. But the point is that uh, what I'm getting at when we met such people, in that environment, you know, 
they didn't really fit into the categories that even we had with all our empathy yeah, yeah. and everything Absolutely. they didn't fit yeah. it didn't fit yeah. this was like yeah. and it's not true that such people were not known to the outside the larger uh, people who have been there from the 50s onwards they all knew and they all thought of it as you know like just sweep it under the carpet because it disturbs the mythology that actually you know, what yeah. we, that's actually mm. that's actually what we encountered felt and it was a very very strong sentiment even though the thing that it goes on because of government patronage which led us yeah. to the other thing that in yes. that time when films were being made there was this whole scramble right i mean everybody's mm-hmm. like you know there was only government patron there was none of this private thing that exists today mm-hmm. you know so that was another aspect you know But you know what yeah. you're saying is interesting when you say that there were many stories you encountered that that you couldn't there was no way you could film and maybe not in their sort of in their particularity and in their specificity but what the film does is that the film is 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 in fact uh hinting at it you know visually you you get a you get a very clear sense of yeah. what I mean for instance that uh, that huge it, palace and yes. what it has become you know Absolutely. what it is now used for you know yeah. and yeah. and also the 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 maharaja the younger generation maharaja and the maharani and their children in that very that whole token <laughs> thing of coming and sitting down for a concert you know where you in so many ways you you sort of get a sense of what this place has become and it's it it's also uh, to me i have not been to myhar but it's a it seemed like seems at least then was a beautiful town oh, because beautiful. you have that uh, uh, hill with the temple on top which seemed to kind of uh, you know be such a big presence in the place and the lake is that a lake that is yeah. Uh, yeah. where yeah, yeah. It's a, it's and a lake, and, yeah. and also the by lanes and lanes it sure. ha- it has a it it seems like a charming place and yet through the places through the characters you you get a very clear sense of what in fact that citation calls the decay you know in a sense yeah. it's a big word to use but you but you get a sense of that so in a sense the film uh, tells us that it doesn't tell us maybe specific stories but it tells us the big story you know uh, and obviously it, it, you know you you sort of found a way of saying what you wanted to say even though you couldn't film specific stories and uh, uh david as the character who then uh, you know uh, um, sort of seems to typify in a sense uh, uh, the current the current meaning in 92 93 the current state the then state of myhar and the and the legacy that uh, uh, baba left behind but uh, so so several questions emerge from this see one is that uh, you know uh, it's ironic that uh, uh, you know the country was burning and uh, there was such it was such a tumultuous sort of years 92 93 with the uh, destruction of the mosque and all that followed after that and you are making a film about a tradition which is uh, syncretic and which is uh, you know which is sort of uh, uh it's a very strong metaphor what uh, baba's uh, tradition was so i don't want to make these simplistic correlations but um, um i mean you've said that myhar was quiet is do you think that that syncretism is what sort of uh, kept myhar quiet during those times is it the what 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 did you sense when you were there why why do you think it was like that you're asking me yeah yeah go ahead go ahead tipu yeah i want to believe it yeah yeah i mean yes. i want to believe it these are what my eyes told me these are people opening their hearts yeah they are ordinary people you know they've been that have been uh, blessed with a place in an otherwise nondescript town and with nondescript lives but they've been blessed with having something extraordinary associated with their place yeah yeah that's i mean i want to believe it yes. obviously i want to believe it yeah you know yeah yeah, yeah. no there was always yeah. a great sense of pride swati you know yeah. in all conversations there's always mm. been this great sense of pride that mm. here is a place that does not 
discriminate mm. on these kind of mm. grounds that mm. you know baba was always this very big symbol and baba's mm. association with the temple was a huge symbol mm. and also you know if you listen to uh, some of the songs that he sings about yeah. the people mm. also realize that it's much it's very it, it's it, deeper it's really, very philosophical, yes. very spiritual. Yes, yes. It's yes. a very deep connect with uh, yes. Sharda Ma. Yes. It was not yes. that usual tokenism that you yes. say, ki, you know, I'm in the temple, I'm in the temple. It wasn't that thing. He nahin. genuinely believed. Yeah. And he stayed on in Mahar because he had that deep connect. And yeah. it, it, it cannot but color the place. Yeah. And it did. Yeah. I don't yeah. know what the situation is now, Tiku. I mean, you know, the way the what has happened all over the country. I, I won't be surprised if that has been, you know, eroded in some it's, manner. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. it was very strong there. And yeah. again, nobody in Nahar was surprised that Meher was Shant. They just assumed that that's assume how it that is. Yeah, absolutely. It's just such a, yeah. You can't believe it, this, it right? It makes yeah. it, no. And it, it, I, I mean, I can't. And at we, the same time, I feel uh, see, elated Swati, to hear this, you know. It's Swati, a, you, you feel at some point that, yeah. We only brought up, both Sunnis bring it up. I'm bringing it up. We only brought it up in the context, not in the context of seeing it in a large socio-politico kind of sense, but it was just a felt thing. We were two guys yes. there. We were stuck. We were stuck. So we made damn good pals with everyone because even mm. they were stuck. Okay, but they have been always stuck. Okay. <laughs> and they were here with these two guys who were stuck. Yeah. And like, you know, they were hanging. We're hanging with these guys, smoking, drinking. Man, I mean, otherwise you don't get that quality of intimacy that you see in that film, yeah? yeah. You know? I mean, I, after seeing it after so many years, it's just because they they were they were open with us. That's how you could do it, you know? Otherwise, yeah. and the other reason to mention that is because it totally and completely uh, gave us that focus. You know, okay, TK, mm -hmm. I should mention that one of the things was in those days that, you know, you hustled a project you have to be through even now, you know, you hustled the project, you put it down on paper, you did all that stuff, and then you started looking for funding. Yeah, and we did all that. It was in that pipeline, but at a certain point of time, because of this experience, okay, all those friends, comrades, allies, partners that we had, there was a consensus that when we came by and talked to him, I said, nay, boss, you guys should do it. That's how we got help from friends, yeah, you know, putting in money and things like that and time, you know. Mm -hmm. There was a consensus that what you guys are saying now, you should do it, you mm -hmm. know. And that's why it got done. I mean, in a kind of way. I mean, I don't know, Sneel. I'd like to no, no, you're right. like you're right. hand, over, hand over all no, the no. credit no, to right. everybody who backed it, yeah. You Absolutely. Know? Everybody who worked yeah. in the film, I mean, you know, it's yeah. beautifully shot. I mean, both yes. yes. Unfortunately, I, un yes. unfortunately yeah. on seeing it on that, I saw this on that iPad. Frankly, guys, listen, man, I saw this on the iPad and I said, like, you know, I'm like a, sorry, I won't use the word, the word came out of my mouth, but I've been really amiss. Okay. Yes. We give, give the background to the viewers right now that, hey, listen, this was made keeping in mind that it would be a 35 mm print, which it was, okay, and it was shown in a theater. So the, the way it's made and filmed and why we did it on 16 is because at that time, film had much better, you know, things, okay. But right now, one lands up feeling, no, one should take the pains to really, really improve the quality because, you know, it merits that. Yeah. I'm guilty yes. of that. I'm the prime yes. principal. We will hold you to it. We will. That's okay, so Tipu, but I'm we will guilty. also hold you to it. I'm Maybe guilty. you can. As being an archival <laughs> junkie and then, you know, just disregarding it for my own thing, our own thing. So, anyway, I, that's, yeah. I thought I should yeah. say that, you know. Yeah. So, um, uh, you know, the other thing that comes to mind, when, came to my mind when I was watching is that. You have chosen to tell the story. You have to chosen to stay within Maihar to tell its story. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's uh, in fact Maihar has, uh, you know, it's uh, the 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 sort of most famous students and uh, uh, you know uh, of this tradition of Baba and of this legacy. In fact, are all over the world, and uh, I'm sure there were many people outside of Maihar from the sort of more successful worlds of music outside who had perhaps an opinion 
about why Mahihar was what it was or so on, but you've chosen to stay within. And that, that must have been a decision. Some of it I understand from what you said earlier, but do you want to sort of uh, uh, talk a little more about it as to why you sort of decided to just stay within Mahihar to tell your story and not look for anybody outside to kind of comment on what's happening in Mahihar? Well, I mean, you're asking me, Sunil, you want? No, no, you, you. She's asking you, Tipu. Oh, she's asking me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, see, two things. Yeah. One, one, after we come back, we find out about the festival. That presents a very interesting structural idea. Actually, it's mm -hmm. a report from Robert Altman's Nashville. That's what exactly the same thing you put. I mean, I shouldn't say, oh, can't pakarke, but. The idea of a the idea of a thing spread over two days where you can see actually beginning, mid and middle and end, right? Yeah. And utilize that to go back and forth. Okay, that presented itself as a very, very nice, elegant, neat, yeah. and it had these resonances also about, you know, the original family not coming. It had yes. these resonances about, you know it was a local festival, then it had the resonance of, hey, we can bring in this government take or take over thing and how it becomes bureaucratic and all these things are still very much part of the playbook in India. So, so that was one reason. And the second reason I think is because it became, I mean, you see, it's quite unnecessary. Yeah? Why would you want to go out anywhere? I mean, this was like full. I mean, in fact, we, I mean, in fact, we, I don't think we did full complete justice. I mean, you know. So, mm. No, you know, and the outside world, <laughs> Swati, in a sense, are the musicians who come to the festival. Festival, you know? yes. What they say about the festival and what goes around says so much more than us trying more. to figure it out. Trying to, yeah. Yes. Yeah, there's no point in talking to somebody somewhere else who says, you know, I owe a great deal to my who's actually never visited in the last visited. 25 years. Yeah. You know, and so, be, you know, and yeah. believe me, we met a lot <laughs> of those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, no, yeah, I'm yeah. sure you would have, which is why yeah. I sort of thought. No, also because there is, you know, in the film, people do say the, you know, there is there is reference to how the family members have kind of uh, do not uh, take an interest in the festival. And, uh, you know, that uh, the festival and the school uh, that he started runs on government support. And there is, you use the word earlier, stuck. There is very much in the film, you get that sense of, you know, people, it, the entire place and it's saying they're carrying on in their own way. But that outside, I mean, the reason I asked about the outside is that it, it, it's a, you know, the other question that springs to mind, which is not necessarily within the scope of the film, but is that what does it take to keep such a rich tradition or a legacy like this alive? Because clearly what we see is that the government taking over and supporting it is not, I mean, it's not really working. It, it's kind of reduced it to some sort of routine sort of, you know, stuff. Actually, uh, so what, what, yeah, Tipu, what, no, I mean, no, essentially just, sorry, that. Sorry, sorry, yeah. You finish your point, you finish your no, point. No, just that, that what, what okay. was your sense that what would okay. it take for Actually, a tradition like this to survive? Because if it's the, I mean, the reason I asked about the outside also, because if the family and the more famous sort of people are not going to take an interest, then what happens? Okay, what, see, that is, that is a, that, that, that is both a, you know, a, a discussion, discourse for people who are, frankly, far more knowledgeable than I am about those things. I really don't know how, what it will take. I mean, mm. short of mm. like, you know, pulling the rug on everybody, I don't know. But, but when you're talking about outside, you understand this was the related question about why only in my head. There is constant reference to the outside. Side. It is yes. that was the whole idea of the film. Yeah. When yeah. I said yeah. about Asterix, okay, it was precisely this. You're told you enter in a train, you come to a place, this is the buzz and background of the place, something's mm -hmm. going on, okay, and you leave the place. But it's constant. People have come from outside, yes. those who have been there for long, and everybody who's there, okay, has 
gone outside to better their own prospects. So that is always a reality. I mean, David, sir, that was the whole point of the thing that the outside world represents. What does it represent? Does it represent opportunity or does it es represent escape? You decide, you know, I'm nobody to judge that, but that's the core of the thought and mm -hmm. failure. Okay. Yeah. It's about or failure. it represents the fearful unknown for some yes, people. Yes, absolutely. For some, yeah, 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 mm. yeah. I mean, there so is a very market. strong opinion that you know mm. perhaps the, David didn't have it in him to mm. step so then, out. It's too comfortable in my head. No, that's that's a mm. point of view. You know, yeah, mm. it, it, mm. Is, and, it is. And 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 the other thing was that this was one thing we were sure about about this inside there and outside is mm. that is that this would this thought would stand the test of time. Mm. Okay. Because it's true for everybody. It's true in any musical tradition. It's true of Baba man. He ran mm -hmm. away from where he was. He was in Calcutta for like years together. Okay. Move, move, move. You know, this mm -hmm. is true for, for any struggling artist in any genre, anywhere mm -hmm. on the planet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. This business of if I'm rooted and if I have to get out, look at all the prominent, I mean, you know, I mean, you don't have to go very far. I mean, just about every example of going for the bright lights or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so we constantly kept telling ourselves, could one make a parallel between? Could you could you place this in, for instance, in you know, 17th century Vienna and today? And the answer to your question is that they do a whole lot better in maintaining certain things, yeah. Because yeah. they attach more value, they have value, they really yeah. attach value to that, yeah. and that's why they preserve that is that is yes. the truth of the matter. You in know? fact, yeah. uh, one person in the film says so about Stratford upon Avon, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I, yeah. I think, I think, you know, what Mahir actually represents in a sense, see, Baba mm. was a great performer. But mm. he was even a greater teacher. Teacher. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's really, I mean, yeah. I mean from yeah. whatever you hear and yes. the kind of disciples that have come from his, you know, his uh, teaching. Yeah. And the band. Yeah. And yes. the band. Yes. Yeah. So the band is a kind of a yeah. different institution. Yeah, but yes. Within, yes. But in the class, teacher. within the Hindustani music band, that's not even considered as any of any yeah. relevance. Yeah. Yeah. So, I know, you know but uh, uh, yes. So, yeah. But yeah. No. No, I'm just saying, I mean, yeah. because so, it had one. Huh. Sure. So yeah. the core, I think, the core, and this is related to the question you asked, you know, what is it that could have made that place, you know, mm. I think mm. the core was that if the, the whole idea of music teaching and education continued, okay, mm. Mm. not in a kind of a necessarily in a school, not mm. necessarily in any particular, you know, formal structure or that, but if mm. somehow mm. if that core idea had kept going, mm. uh, I mean, you know, could David have become a teacher? I don't know. Mm. You know who mm. would have done it? I don't mm. know. But mm. I think somewhere the spirit of teaching that was there mm. and was so powerful mm. that it, see, Mahir, even today is a small place, a bit isolated. You can imagine at that time. Yes. You know, somebody yes. like Ravi Shankar giving up everything. I mean, Ravi Shankar, when he went to Mahir, was already a man of the world. He was traveling mm. everywhere with Uday Shankar, driving yes. fancy cars, yes. wearing fancy clothes. And when he yes. comes to Mahir, isn't this right? When talking, he comes to Mahir, talking, he, he shaves 90. his head. We're and talking comes, 1936 here. Correct. 30, yes. Yes. Yeah, he yes. shaves his head because it's almost like he, he's going into a hermitage, you know, in a yes. sense, you know. Yes. So, yes. in fact, think, sorry. No, no, carry on, carry on. Yeah. No, just from that, through the course of making and us becoming like, you know, like, you know, I mean, really integrating with this whole musicology people and global musician fraternity and all that it's like a you know uh we met people who are friends to this day who at the age of 17 18 came from australia or india okay and came to my heart to learn well after baba's hundred they don't really think of that experience as having been a learning experience but mm. they did it there are such mm. people we could have, if you wanted the outside world, we could have, you know, tossed the outside world at varying levels its impact. Yeah, yeah. But that, that is to be felt. Yeah. You know? No, no. That's I didn't. Be, I, I didn't want the world. outside world at all, Tipu. I, I sort yes. of. But I, no, no, I'm just, I, I, I wanted to. No, no, yeah. I'm just saying. I'm just saying yes. that, like, what, yes. of what Sunil <laughs> was saying. You know that the significance and importance may have dulled today, but even at the time we were doing, okay. 
it was like a kind of a it a place a memory mm. uh, a teacher's legacy you know around that core were all these great musicians with their you know their own interpretations etc all pivoting mm. around that core idea i mean there are enough people who would claim that gharana legacy who they had marginal if any connect with it yeah. that's my mm. point you know yeah sure yeah in fact when you're watching the film you have to i have to constantly remind myself you know that there are these two different sort of time periods that you are continuously engaging with one is when the film was made which is the early 90s and then within the film everybody is talking about a time 20 30 perhaps 40 even earlier so there is that time uh in history there is the time in which you made the film which was then the present but while watching today you have to constantly remind yourself that even that is 30 years ago you yeah. know almost yeah. and uh, uh you know so what you can't but help wondering what uh, uh you know what my hair would be like now and in fact i did read like you did sunil about somebody you know um, building some kind of a museum uh, yeah, art a sculpture gallery park and a sculpture a park and and, yeah. and it all sort of seemed a little so yeah. um, you know and in fact that is um, also um, a question that someone has asked uh, jay krishnan menon has said how is the town myhar now how much time the other is how much time it took to make the film that's what he asks meaning uh... to make the uh, meaning, film to, from I mean, the start uh see uh i mean i i can't i can't exactly put it down uh, in time terms but i mean like shooting over a period of 3 or 3 schedules two schedules at least two schedules three. i think we did two one schedule we did one schedule was during the festival festival mm. and then we did and a follow up schedule yeah and then like you know when it was warmer like, when was warmer yeah and then like mm-hmm. editing i mean like you know you're editing on an edit sync and, and like i don't know if there are any film people there but like he it's not easy there will be you yeah. know yeah it's yeah. not easy when you're editing 16 mm in india in those days on an edit sync and like you know you got to be careful of each and every frame i mean so it would have taken us months yeah but i would mm-hmm. say about say Eight months, I mean, would you think? Eight months to a year. Eight, to eight a year. months yeah. to a year. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. I mean, like not it. like totally exclusive, doing other stuff. But other things yeah. as well. Yeah, other but things. finishing yeah. it, I yeah. think, in in a calendar year, probably. Yeah, yeah. 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 Rather, I mean, quite quickly, actually, we managed huh. to put it out quite quickly. Yeah. So uh, there's another. It's more uh, sort of initially uh, some words of appreciation from Gauri Dange. Thank you, thank you for this film that is elegiac and yet celebratory. It references irony as well as innocence. It is both informative and evocative, and like a gazelle, it tells us as much as it leaves unsaid. When you began to ideate about this film, you must have come across some places of origin that continue to thrive and do well even years after the founding musician has. passed away like the harbalab in uh, jalandhar or is it more common for that kind of homage to happen mainly in other more viable urban centers perhaps like the savai gandharva festival or the alladia khan one etc and that too by the ongoing efforts of some of the leading disciples this is touching upon some of the things that we talked about also sure. and secondly like you asked the music teacher of the music college there is the lack of interest because of the student or the teacher can we ask is the desultory dwindling interest in the myhar music festival both because the legacy carriers have turned their back on the place as well as because of dwindling listeners <laughs> wow i mean that's like i mean like hey, that's everything that is about it is there <laughs> in the film i mean What's the question here? I mean, well, it's she's wondering. Well, the I question. think what yeah. she's, she's asking is that there are there are other uh, you know yeah. other places, places that are successful, which are which are you know still alive and you know alive. thriving yeah. and you know uh, kind of um, energetic in that sense. Um, I can just so, say, look, uh, as an avid festival goer, that's the one thing I know about. I tell you, nothing is thriving. I mean, if you think things are thriving, nothing is thriving. Okay, and. 
I mean, yes, other places do. Yes, there is. But look, I mean, in the modern world, so many, there's so many restraints on Hindustani performance of classical music. I mean, it's got to be all night. I mean, you know, you can't have this 10 o'clock shut shop and then this happens. That I'm, I'm, I'm just arguing the case for, you know, there are certain finite, I mean, it's there in the film also, yeah? The question of money, yeah? I mean, yeah. you know, it's even that's yeah. been addressed in a kind of way. So mm -hmm. if they are yeah. doing well, it can only be because of intense local support anywhere, I would think. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I don't know what. Yeah. No, I think, I think it's to do with the nature of the arts, you know, that any, you know, if you have to nurture it, then there has to be that deep personal interest a commitment not just to a specific event or a gharana or a musician but to the larger idea of the value of that particular thing it could be music it could be theater it could be anything uh, art, when you, art, yeah art. when you look beyond yourself to a larger idea can you as a practitioner subsume your personal thing to in, and only then it will happen the minute it's agenda driven ki i will get rub off from being this which a lot of this happens you know you know a lot of this happens <laughs> and it's it's doomed here it's never going to work it's never going mm. to work there're going to be ups and downs it's never going to work mm. yeah um okay next question is from tara kini i know you she has in fact two one is to do with the ideas that we've been talking about where she says isn't it true that the burden of legacy is daunting for uh, any generation next to an iconic figure. Uh, that's that's more true. A sort of, yeah, yeah. Very true. Um, uh, her other question is uh, about just, the making. Can I, sorry, yeah. sorry, can I just sure. comment on that? All right. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think as someone who is burdened, burdened, not really, but yeah. who is, who has several legacies, okay, uh, thanks to having learned under several people, I think it has to do with how the the teacher the founder you know the fountain head whatever you want to call that person uh, are you part of a feudal system then yes it is a burden okay and you can you you just want to get out of it actually and if you want to continue that burden you just do it because you are told it's important that you have to do it right there's no really inner feeling for it but if you come from a slightly more open you know uh, tradition where where you are allowed to take the legacy forward in the way you interpret it right then it can never be a burden. Then it's actually a strength, the strength of tradition. That you that have this fact is yours. tradition moving yeah. forward. Yeah. yeah. That is yeah. in fact tradition Absolutely. moving forward. I mean, you know, I've worked with teachers who said that, you know, you what you do needn't be anything like what I do. It doesn't matter. As long yeah. as the spirit is the same, the spirit yeah. of curiosity, of innovation, whatever else, the spirit that, you know, I did, uh, defines that particular legacy. So I, I, that's really my answer to that. Yeah, no, that, that's actually completely the case. I mean, completely and totally the case. And that is why you have, you know, some people in the classical tradition, I mean, they're seen as exemplary performers, but like really have no students worth the name, although the students are trying to garner the name, but really not left anything, you know, because they've either been so iconoclastic <laughs> as to as to retain something such that nobody else can ever become another. And the paradox here is that in our system, whether it's in like in theater or music or in all arts, it's like, you know, a good teacher is known by the students you leave behind. You know, so this, the, the, the dialect to use, sorry, but what Sunil was getting at, that the dialectic between the performer who's a transmitter and one who carries forward a certain thing. This is a tricky and, and you know, the general public has to be really supportive of your endeavors because this is how art gets made. I mean, how else does it get made? Right? You know? So, yeah. David yeah. Sab, David Sab bolta hai, kala pesh karo, kala. <laughs> Isse acha aapko kya yeah. Okay. There is, in fact, someone has asked. Kala pesh karne wale ko shakal se samaj me nahi aata hai. Hala ke log kehte hai ki shakal se sab kuch pehchan hota hai aajkal. Lekin ye bhi haqiqat hai. Chalo, sorry. No, no, not in the least. Someone has asked a question about David too. But before that, uh, uh, there are two questions about the film itself. Uh, 
Uh, one is uh, from Tarakini again. I know you both worked together seamlessly, but what were the decisions you made as a director, Tipu, and you as a producer, Sunil? <laughs> Okay, I, I'll just take this, Tipu. Uh, just yeah. so you can add to it, right? Yes, you are absolutely right. We work seamlessly. Um, there, it was a common intent, uh, but but uh, I was very very new to the whole world of documentary films. All right, uh, but Tipu had been doing that for a fair amount of time. Uh, he had a much sharper understanding of what was being made. It was very clear that he directed the film. The vision of that. Yes, we talked about it a lot, we discussed it a lot, but for me, it was really my first introduction to this fascinating world of doc independent documentary filmmaking, which had just started blossoming at that point, you know, and uh, it was really for me a, a window to this world, which I occupied and stayed and enjoyed and learned a lot from for the next, what, eight, ten years. Uh, uh, but yeah, but at the end of the day, you know, to get any task done, you do have to divide responsibilities, uh, and then, and, and the, in the best of circumstances, these responsibilities get divided by mutual consent, and so it's all very smooth, which is what actually happened in this. But you know, in a small unit with three people, four people working, everybody does everything as much as possible. Yeah. Isko isko jugal bandi kehte hain, madam. Yeah. Shab ka sahi istemal ho to hoi hai na. That's true. That's true. Yeah. yeah. No, also uh, it was made, uh, Tara, it was made in a, in a in, you know, this, is a, this is an amazing spirit that you see in independent work, whether it's in theater mm -hmm. or in documentary films, everybody pitches in because the idea they feel is important, Yeah, you know, and whether it was, you know, the, the, the person who shot the film, Monan, or the, the sound record, everybody, Bhavi spent months and months with Tipu editing this film, right? Uh, everybody pitches in, which is the only way things get done. No, no, there's the, not only that, there's intense camaraderie from people whom you respect and, and you learn so much from others. Yeah, yeah I absolutely. mean, if you don't keep yourself open to that, you're like foolish, you know, yeah, absolutely. because you can only support yourself and if you can support others. So it works like that. It used to work like that. And I think it still does. I mean, it, it does. It does work like that. Yeah, everybody not just chips in. I mean, you know, you move. You make really extraordinary efforts and, and you call upon yourself a lot more energy and application than you would if it was a paying gig, you know? Yeah, I absolutely. Mean, absolutely. You know, there's no question about that. Yeah? yeah. That's why I said the value of the idea is much more than it's, anything else. Yeah. And, that, and yeah. if you have that kind of a, you know, working environment, then you can't go wrong. Yeah. You just can't go wrong. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, because there's there's so many people who are there, like, you know, padding and people who are not basically now, they're not sycophants, man. I mean, they're not like, ha ha, bolne wale. everyone, whether it's camera guy, sound assistant, you work. I mean, you know, the hierarchies don't exist. Think person thinks, hey, this is silly. We shouldn't do it like this. And he's got a reason. Yeah, right. So let's do it your way, you know. I mean, to build that kind of kind of trust and faith in the people who you work with all right will invariably produce nice good good results i mean that's how it is you know yeah so that has that's been how it, as sunil said the, the spirit world, yeah. yeah that's yes, been the spirit yes, you know that spirit spirit. I mean, as a, yeah you know, absolutely yeah, very you know much that. in fact yeah. i yeah this film was made sort of before my time with both of you but i've <laughs> know it very well having worked for many years with both of you and learned much. Uh, 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 the next question is from Sunanda. Uh, Timeless film, loved it. Did you write a script before filming? In a sense, uh, part of question, it has been she, answered. Huh? I asked the question about script as it feels like a fiction film. That's what she says a little later. I'm just adding to that. Ah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I haven't yet gone down. Yeah, because it feels like a that fiction film. That, 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 that was the, the Robert Altman reference, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 No. yeah. I think I think I think uh, I think uh, the 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 basic the basic in structure that we would attempt to follow was very clear in our heads. Okay. But I think the construction of the film in the form that you see really took place on the editing table, as happens very often in 
uh, work like this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Would you agree, Tipu? The construction, because there were versions, you know, when you guys were editing, uh, I'd come by once in a while and every time I'd see a, a different, you know, emphasis, a different approach. So it, it was constructed essentially on the editing actually, table. With actually, we, actually, Sunil, to draw, I don't I, I shouldn't do this, but you should know that we sealed it only after we showed Vijay Tendulkar, if you remember. Yeah. <laughs> that's when we that's when we said, okay, this seems to be, you know, yeah. the I mean I mean he he was someone we both respected and he liked us. And so it because yeah, but at the same time, at the same time, while you say that that's true, one has to mention that when you're working with film at that time, okay, that is seen in negative film. Uh, there used to be like restraints on the amount of stock you could buy. You that had is. to go, you had to get a permit, okay, from the Tokyo Producers Association. And then, you know, you had to like, you had to measure it out, uh, you know, to a pretty much a finite accuracy because you know the amount of film stock and it's running time. You have to figure that. So it's not like this free for all docu where you just blast away. You can do whatever you want. So in that sense, this lady's interpretation of it like fiction, yes, it is because we have to plan it like that because there is no other way to conserve stock. You have to think also like that. Okay. So you have to like understand fiction techniques of composition or of getting motion and movement and things like that or narrative techniques of film not for any other reason of course there may be many stylistic reasons but the principal reason is because there was a crippling absolutely crippling restraint on stock you didn't know what you're doing don't do it yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You, you know? it, it forced a certain precision on you. you know? Yeah. A yeah. certain rigor. It, it forced yeah. you to. It forced you to commit. You know. Yeah. You, don't, yeah. you didn't leave yeah. it for yeah. later. I mean, yeah. we'll, we'll record an interview. One hour, we'll see. 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 we to do with the film since we are on the topic. Uh, um, an anonymous attendee writes that David was such a memorable character. Did you bond instantly with him or did it take some time for him to open up? Uh, that's one. And then there's another question also um, about um, uh, uh, David, which is that any recording available of Ustad David, did you shoot anything in full back then by him and can such footage be salvaged? Uh, <laughs> no, no. So I just wanted to ask you: Do you still have that videotape, or is it gone? Oh, uh, one will have to. I don't know, man. I don't you know. know at man. that time, video was very, very primitive, right? Which yeah. is why, and of course, you know, at that point of time, oh, really? no, yeah. no documentary film person of worth his or her salt would shoot on video, right? It was no, no, that, yeah, oh, come on, come on, come on. Oh, no, that, no, that was, no, no, that snootiness, that snootiness yeah, also yeah. had a commercial angle that, yeah. you know, that no film shot on video could be submitted to the national awards. National awards, exactly. Yeah, exactly. so it had to be on film if you wanted to but, do that. But so, we had yeah. managed to get hold of a video camera from a friend yeah. And believe me, it came in a large suitcase. That's how bulky even home video used to be at that point of time. <laughs> yeah. Suitcase that we had to lug and be careful with because, you know, you couldn't, you know, forget it somewhere in the train or at the station or on location, right? And we shot some stuff around, which we knew we were not going to use in the film, but we felt it was really important to get some of this material. Yeah. And then uh, one, one of the long interviews was with David. Uh, yeah. really about what life was for a musician at that time as part of being part of a, you know, uh, as part of being a court and musician. It, and, yeah, know, yeah. And yeah. that video ran out, but the audio was there, if you remember. I don't know. I think we had. It, so, yeah. it was on that Sony Walkman cassette. Recorder. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Correct. So, you know, we had, we had that. But, you know, we were also at a time when there was no way to transfer these things easily. And, you know, it was all very, very very difficult at that time so i don't think much very of little, survived. yeah very little money yeah but listen i'll yeah. tell you now that that lady mentioned about david saab also in there's that sequence mm -hmm. where someone called anand huh yes actually actually 
we, in the course of making, realized that there was a huge amount of archival material that was like virtually like rotting with the princely people. We accessed, we knew that there was, we had actually accessed some of the material. They gave us some of it. You remember, Sunil, about yeah, the 30s, yeah. the, the yeah. Maharaja and all that. Okay, we did get some and there was some and we hustled the fact that there is this, we pointed out to government people, we pointed out to the school that the family runs in San Francisco, yeah, that like this stuff is there, you know, but we got, I mean, that wasn't our primary, I mean, that's for archivists and people to like, you know, but it was very much there. We had spoken even to the NCPA, but nothing came of it, okay. But what the lady's talking about there is genuine like very very rare scripts that yeah. the the, yes. the 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 musician part the musicians all right would have had no access to because it was with the it was in the archive of the princely state Prince, yeah. yeah 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 in fact that lady in the film who sort of pulls out those things and she uh, you know she she they, they are uh, they yeah. are yeah royal they are those book. yeah books she's from the royal family yes, and she yes, gives them much. to you yeah. And in fact, you you get goosebumps when you watch it because you feel, my God, this is now you know you you wonder what is going to happen to this, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, some other some other other royal families, bigger, more well funded, those who have great. I mean, especially among in Dupad. I mean, I don't want to mention him, but great stuff of accessing their archive and doing it. But that requires. You know, single-minded dedication and like people yeah. who know what they're doing. You know, not like our, in that sense, it's not our remit or mandate to, you know, we just, our mandate, I think, is to locate and let the right people know that such things exist. I mean, can we spend our money to do it? I don't, I mean, you know. No, I mean, but on me. the question of David Saab, let me say one thing. Uh I mean, I know this sounds stupid, right? But uh, it's easy for freaks to kind of get together. It's not, I don't think that we were like seen as freaks there. And uh, he's loved by everybody there. You know, you see his, and our biggest challenge in the film, after having seen the film after 25 years, it still remained, and I'm so happy we managed to not do that. Our biggest challenge while making the film was, do we make a freak show? Yeah, because if we had done that, if we had, we had in all the material. Man, yeah, anybody disposable. who knows film mm. will be able to see that we could yeah. have easily have made it into a freak show, okay? And done rara for our, you know, great clairvoyant discovery and and all that, but we didn't want to do it because in the twelve days that we were there, we became friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we became friends. Other than the stuff he said, I mean. I mean, we're just hanging, you know, it's very easy to so mind. You, you just Swati. take yeah. 50 and steps and like you're at the yeah. end of the town, right? Yeah. So Can I just, you know, Swati, yeah. that, 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 that sequence where the lady from the royal family is showing us the manuscripts. Yeah. That was the first time that David was actually in a frame when we were shooting. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you can see he's very formal and he's playing mm -hmm. a part mm -hmm. of the, yeah. you know, the musician yes. who knows, right? Who knows, yeah. yeah. Because he, he, was, yeah. he wanted yeah. to be projected yeah. by that. Yeah, yeah. Then a few days later, we went into his, what we call his cave, which is this little mm. room. And you remember mm. that interview that he talks about how he first met. met. It is after that after interview that. that he really, he relaxed, he revealed mm. himself. Mm. And there was no, and then, and then he showed who he really was. He was very yeah. funny, tremendous yeah. wit. Okay. Yes. A character. I mean, yeah, like, a, has, a truly, yeah. yeah and lovable character. In yeah, the, and he yeah. knew it all. He knew yeah. it. He was just, yeah. you know, he knew the under belly of everything. Yeah. In yeah. fact, he puts a sort of a lighter spin on it, but you, yeah. you can yeah, hear he the, knows. that. He stuff. knows all yeah, the stories. You know. Yeah. 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 There are questions about uh, music and that's, uh, you know, Padmavati Rao says, could you please shed some light on or share a story of the senior Maihar Gharana connect, connect that you came across since Ali Akbar Khan Sahib's father was a disciple of uh, Wazir Khan Sahib of the senior Gharana. How much of that, in your opinion, has survived? Um, from, a, one from a musical question. point of view? From a music point uh, of view. I yeah. I mean, I was think he so mm. I mean that's that's going back 
<laughs> very far Even, because yeah. uh, that means Rampur Gharana people she's asking about. Senia, that's, no, because the Wazir yeah. Khan, that's why they call yeah. it the Senia yeah. yeah. Mahir yeah. Gharana. Yeah. 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 No, these, yeah. these nomen, the nomenclature uh, association that happened from the, you know, from, I would say from the early 50s, you can discuss that. It's not really uh, very, very important to, to, to appreciate film, but the, the more you know, you will get more. So that question has a validity. Uh, it's just that uh, it requires a, a proper answer from somebody who, who knows more knows about the music. Yeah, yeah. 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 know musically more. Yeah, Al yeah. although a very yeah. valid question. Yeah. 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 yeah, Maybe we knew the answer 20 years ago. I forgot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Don't tell them. Another, right. uh, <laughs> another question also about in about sort of the carrying on of a legacy in response to what you've said. Jayashri uh, Joshi, and I can't read the full name. Jayashri Ishwar. Ishwar, yeah. So are you saying that Nobody Ustaz Ali Akbar it. Khan and Ashish Khan have carried on Baba's legacy in their own way without a burden, interpreting it in their own way on foreign soil? Personally, I feel they let that huge legacy down, have always felt bad about everything around Maihar crumbling, despite the genius Baba's many star pupils. Uh, however, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for this film. This is how she continues. And for this conversation, Geo Geo, warm thanks to BIC2. And there is, I think, one more uh, appeal from her. Please, please, please salvage whatever you can from this project, videos and so on that you have discussed. Yeah. yeah. And, ma'am. Jindabad to you. We tried, tried, tried. Yeah, 30 years ago, 29 years ago. I mean, you know, it was so tough. There was no backup. There was nothing. Yeah, yeah. You did everything on your own. So if we had to have done that, we would have had to hustle money, work other ways, do it. You know, it's just it is happening to, to, to think about that. Yeah. But, but uh, it's true what she say. I mean, it's true, you know. Well, yeah. this film also is 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 uh, is of archival value now, you know, in in the sense that you've made a film and that itself, because there really is, uh, I mean, I don't know if there are any recordings of David Saab that exist outside, but this film is now a record of who he is. Yeah, unfortunately, and we got is, him very late know. when he mm. had kind of, you know, you see him playing. Mm. But mm. he apparently was a very, very versatile musician, could play a variety mm. of instruments. Just right? like his guru. Yeah, just mm. like his guru. He could play mm. a lot of instruments. And we just we just got there too late, in a sense. Mm. And, so, and also that uh, once the film was done, and, uh, you know, I mean, there are these, Forget it, yeah, I'll be charitable and won't call them cabal, okay? But, uh, you know, there are enough people who like, who pounced on it because it's a very interesting film, you see, for hardcore music people like, you know, they don't want to know about the sociology or if they've heard some garbled version. They want to know about the music, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, for those who want to know about the musicology and the, essentially the sociology of music, okay, for them, they, they have other yardsticks to, to analyze. What we've landed up doing in this film is like, in a way, teasing all these various different entities to think about other things. Uh, that was the intention, right? I mean, you know, because music people, many music people and review people, all right, they react. We intended to put bad music. We are not we're not dopes. We know what music is, right? So the conscious use of, you know, badly performed music. I mean, like David Sars playing the salute. It's like ghastly musically, you know? Okay. But it has in, even in that, even in that sensation, that musical sensation, even though all the notes are haywire, all that, you know that there was something, there's something inside it. There's a felt, there's a feeling. And that feeling is a lot to do with the fact that, you know, here these two young guys have come after like 
ever so long and they're asking me about these things and there's a feeling you know even in the songs he sings okay if you look listen carefully you know the reason it's because of that and we were i mean they're ranging from pillory to query uh, quizical okay about why would you in a music film intentionally use bad music okay we needn't have I, I I don't know if I'm making this clear that this no, is another I, I, paradigm yeah, paradigm yeah. about making films on music where you just keep improving even the original. There's no need to do that. This is not a film on the music, right? So that basically that's what I'm saying. That you know anybody who is creating anybody who is you know even the guy on the road who used to play that Petey one octave Petey and singing you know I mean. song he doesn't know from for money you know to the highest pinnacle of musicianship they're still doing something musical you define what you how you see that you know that i mean that's a very very important point because it kept coming up later because it 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 unsettles people you expect perfection music is one of the rare things that any common person will also know what's you know rank bad you know so the intention was to do that to disrupt that sense of perfection which which is the norm when you make a film on music yeah. so so that and and it creates a dissonance that was the idea it creates a dissonance you know they're dismal you know the the mayhar band playing okay the guys who are today you know you can tell i mean you know that it's like but they've got their moment in the sun as well you know so we've been you know not been fair the music's not well performed because they you know they forgotten people so in that sense there's a there's a resonance for all that's what try to do in a subliminal way that you know this is true for music musicians i mean wherever whatever culture you come from yeah you know you can go downhill you know you can go downhill but you can still have your dignity intact and your you know those questions come up i think uh there's one more question for gauri i think we have time for one last question uh yes prabhu yeah okay did any of the core family and inner circle of baba's disciples see your film and take issue with it uh sunil you want to answer uh yeah we we had yes problems. and no yeah we, we had problems in a sense yeah, i mean you know the minute the film was we did the minute the word got around that such a film had been made and and as typical without seeing it you immediately you know raise objections so we tried to talk about it and it didn't go beyond that really it didn't it wasn't as though someone came and stopped it or anything of that kind but we also had support you know from within the family also you know uh, so i think i think in a sense i mean without getting into the nitty gritty of it mm. the film also revealed the the cracks and the the you know the the differences of opinion within the gharana itself and which i don't think is a which is normal i guess you know mm. there are some people mm. who see it in a particular way uh, so yes there was that there was that briefly but i would not say anything terribly serious that daunted us in fact uh, we felt that that attention actually in a way you know vindicated what the film was trying to say because we obviously had you know stated some truth which is why mm. it had we had led to that kind process. of a, yeah, yeah. So it became started. it became it became a mirror yeah ha huh. you know how it is yeah. huh? it, it became know. a mirror yeah. so better to avert your eyes no yeah it happens it like that that was the vibe yeah that was the vibe yeah okay so we uh, i will just in closing in fact uh, uh, just want to sort of uh, uh, note the the protest that uh, s anand yes. has posts about <laughs> you, should, you actually, yes. calling uh, david's uh, uh, performance bad day you know he says oh no it was not ghastly at all earlier he's talked about how he has no heirs david sab he's an ustad ustad and uh, you know um, and then he says his singing of the bandish by baba on sur and shit it is so is so informal and grand at once there's so much sadgi to his music the flute was sublime 
सो हमने तो या हमने तो वही सोचा इसलिए तो डाला सा अपने को तो वही वही लगा ना yeah he is also refers refers to an essay which i've also read on in outlook uh, in 1998 which uh, is the only piece that refers to david sam right okay uh, yeah, yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. it was written in 1998 and in fact it's kind of talking about the fading uh, notes i think it's right. called the fading notes of my heart oh i vaguely uh, remember somebody yeah. writing of the film scene uh, i vaguely so, remember this <laughs> so yeah. that's that and then a final one from gauri saying i salute the audacity of not including the music or names of the big boys thank god <laughs> <laughs> yes that was what my question also was yeah. it's a good thing yeah. that you yeah. anyway in fact I... in fact in fact in fact uh, there's a there was a conscious reason for doing that right i mean there are yeah. like you know regarding to like major copyright issues <laughs> which would have stalled everything and uh, this just was right you didn't need that crutch of that yeah. was my whole point to start with like you know when you yeah. start gratifying things that's easy you know I mean, not that you should go uncovering dirt either but i mean hey it was there you know you know i can i just interrupt you know swati i'll be a little more pragmatic you can mm. you know there is a certain age when you can be idealistic like this okay right mm. uh we had backing to some extent as long as ali akbar khan sahab was part of the film right? yeah because he was a big yeah. name the minute yeah. we came back from mahir and we announced to this person who was very warmly and graciously willing to back some of the film that oh actually ali akbar sahab cannot be part of this film anymore because it's now a different film and he said oh well in that case i think i'll have to back off right <laughs> now that was a moment of truth mm. yeah at that point yeah. we could have said oh 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 what yes. are we doing yes. Or, yes but thank god you're at particular age when idealism scores mm. right thank god for that and you yes. said no we're going to do it regardless right? yes yeah so 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 you thank you for that spirit in that spirit <laughs> which survived and which is what made this film I possible should, i should i should tell you i yes. should tell you at a parting thing not for the film i should tell you i've never spoken about it even sunil has never spoken about it okay but when we were coming back from my her okay one of the things that has clouded our vision and made the film what it was when we were coming back okay there were just there were two of us and another two people in the entire bogey okay the train the entire train had about 30 passengers and every window from every window outside every station we just seeing places burning, burning. yeah burning there was curfew there was nothing on any station we didn't get any water there was no food okay there was just this there was this woman and this guy and they were petrified and there was oh, one jawan yeah right yeah. yeah and that was it that was it till as sunil knows till we reached itarsi yeah right that was like and we got stuck there Yeah. Okay so yeah. what we're saying is when we're coming back this is the imaging that very few people had of that time actually yeah. you know and it yeah. it really made a difference in the way you see spiritualism and the yes. way you saw those things later sure. you know yes. 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 all right okay okay <laughs> so thank, thank you. you both thank very, you very much, much. Yeah, it has lovely. been a wonderful yeah. conversation yeah. yeah thank you for taking yeah. us back into another time wow that's fun yeah thank you <laughs> yeah thank you yeah, that was I mean, I saw it. I saw it this time, and Swati, Sunil, thanks, man. It was like, I mean, it was a good film. So, you know? thank you, Sunil, for making that transfer onto yeah. video and then a digital copy at that time. Yeah. It's the thing with no support and no funding, no big uh, archivists and That's whatever. Story but you of our did life. It. No thanks. Yes. We do it because yes. it has to be done. Simple. Done. Yes. Leave yes. it at that. Yes. Let's leave it yeah. at that. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. uh, Sunil. Thank you, Arnab. Thank you, Swati. It's been an absolute privilege to you know, listen into this conversation. Uh, makes me want to go back and watch the film again. So thank you, and thank you, audiences, for joining us today. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you, Swati. Bye. bye.